All right. So welcome, welcome everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. We've got a great number of participants today. I am Hallie Crawford. I am a certified career coach and I am the founder of HallieCrawford.com. And today we are gonna be talking about overcoming the imposter syndrome. And I am very excited to be here with you today. Just as a reminder, we are recording this call and you will receive a copy of the recording after we are finished today via email, okay? Um, also, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Everyone is going to be on mute today, um, except for me, obviously, but we will have a Q&A portion at the end. Please feel free to ask any questions that you have at the end of the webinar in the chat box, and I can respond to those um, verbally as we go. Um, and we're gonna hold that at the, at the end for about five or 10 minutes. Um, and also, um, we will keep everyone on mute the whole time, but you will get the recording afterwards, just as a reminder via email. So feel free to take notes as we go, but don't feel like you have to be you know, completely frantic about it, okay? All right, so let's dive in, everyone. So we are talking about the imposter syndrome and how to move past it. And one of the first things that I wanted to share with you or tell you is that honestly, I feel or have a sense of the imposter syndrome pretty frequently. It happens to me as well. And um, just the other day, actually, my mom gave me some advice and it was really, really fantastic. This is my mom in the middle of the screen here, my sister on the right and I'm on the far left. This is when I was 25, a long time ago. Um, and the other day though, I was talking to my mom and she gave me this great advice and it was career related, but also you know, kind of related to my personal life as well. And I said, gosh, that's really good advice, mom. Where did you hear that? And she said, uh, I read it on your blog. So I would say, honestly, everybody, that about 40% of the time, I still have a sense of the imposter syndrome and feeling like my success as a career coach has been due to luck more than talent or skill or something else. And honestly, it does depend on the day and the situation, which I'm sure it does for you. Um, and it can be hard sometimes for me because I work at home, I have a home office, and I work alone as well, so it can be easier sometimes to kind of psych myself out and feel like, gosh, am I really as good as other people think I am, or as sometimes I think I am too. So I just want you to know right off the bat here, everyone, that I totally understand how this feels and how it works, because I experience it myself as well, okay? I feel like we get we have this great website, but every once in a while, just like we all do, I sometimes make mistakes in my business or in my coaching. And these voices in my head will start to crawl all over me and say, gosh, you're not as great of a business owner as you look. Or if I don't know the exact answer to a business question, I don't feel as good about myself. We get kudos all the time um, on our services and our reputation as career coaches in the industry is fantastic. But I still sometimes have these voices. So I get that that can be the case for you too. And what we're gonna talk about today, everyone, are the tools that I use to help manage the imposter syndrome, but also tools that we use as well with our clients and have found great success with them. Our satisfaction rate with our clients is fantastic. 98% of the people we work with say, five out of you know five on a you know that scale in terms of being very satisfied with our services so we know that these tools absolutely work so here's our agenda for today let's take a look at it we're going to first talk about the imposter syndrome and how do we define it what does it mean we're going to then talk about the impact that it has on us the external impact and the internal impact because there are two kind of ways this can impact us and we need to pay attention to both of those. We're also going to talk about tools to manage it and overcome this. And number four here, the last item is I want you all to walk away with very tangible action steps that you will take in the next week in order to start to work through this. Okay. One other quick item I wanted to let you all know, if anyone in addition to the recording would like a copy of the presentation that I'm using today as a PDF, please feel free to email me at admin at halliecrawford.com. We would be happy to email that to you after the webinar today, okay? 
So here's the deal, and I actually, let's take a look at this slide, everyone, but I also wanted to share just a quick, you know, story with you. I was doing this webinar with um, Vanderbilt um, alumni. Vanderbilt is my alma mater. Um, got my undergraduate degree there and a master's degree in communication from the University of Illinois. And I was doing this webinar about a year ago for um, a Vanderbilt alum. And afterwards, when I was speaking with um, the career director there, the alumni career director, she said, you know, there were several alum on here that I recognize from Nashville, you know, locally, who are incredibly successful business owners. And she said, you know, I was surprised that they attended this webinar. Obviously, they clearly feel this way. So I wanted to share that with you all, too, because no matter how successful you are, I just want you to know you're not alone. Even incredibly successful people can still experience this imposter syndrome and the sense of, gosh, not being as good as other people think they are or as they think they are sometimes too. So take a look at this slide. Basically, the way to define the imposter syndrome is it's a psychological you know, phenomenon where people have trouble um, internalizing their accomplishments and really taking ownership of those and saying, yeah, this was due to my hard work or you know, my talent or skill. In some cases, they can be convinced they're frauds or feel like they're frauds and don't deserve the success that they have achieved. And a lot of times they may assume that it's, oh, it was just luck or I got a lucky break or whatever it was rather than their talent and hard work, okay? So this is the basic way that we describe this. Now, if we take a look at this next slide, it relates to what I just said a moment ago. So this was from Inc. Magazine a few years ago um, about entrepreneurs. And I think a lot of us feel like, gosh, having the imposter syndrome seems at odds with being an entrepreneur because entrepreneurs are taking such great risks, you know, putting themselves out there to start their business. And we all assume that they're just incredibly confident and that's it, right? But this is a quote from this article um, from a man, I believe this um, health food store was out in Oregon. And he said this, that he didn't feel like he deserved the success he had. You know, it was a great business, but you know, he questioned even how much of it was because of him or how much of it was because of luck of the location or staff. And there's nothing wrong, everyone, by the way, of course, in giving kudos and credit to your teammates and, you know, people that work with you. Of course, that's like a natural part of the process. But we also have to be sure that we're able to take ownership of the strengths that we have, too, and the hard work that we've put in. So here's one quick statistic is two out of five successful people actually consider themselves broad. So there's a lot of people out there that have this sense of it. And 70% of all professionals feel like imposters at one time or another. And I wanted to point this out at the bottom because I want you to realize too that you, this doesn't mean that you're always feeling this way, that it's constant. You know, it could just be, like I said before, it could be situational or it could be when you're talking to a specific person or working with a certain client or teammate. So one of the things I want you all do, to do right now is get out your pen and paper and start to write down when are the times when you tend to feel this way more than others? Because if you can start to identify like a theme or a pattern, and when you have the sense of feeling like a fraud or imposter, that can help you better manage it, of course, okay? So go ahead and write that down for us. When are the times that this is happening? Is it a period of time? Is it when you're at a certain place? Is it when you're talking with a certain person, okay? Write that down for us. And then, by the way, if you need additional assistance on this, feel free to email me to do a free career strategy session. I'd be happy to help you with this or any other career goal, career goal if needed. But a lot of times, people have very specific, unique situations, and I'm happy to chat with you about that further to help you get advice on your particular situation, okay? So think about when this happens to you the majority of the time, and then take a look at this next slide, everybody. So there's basically the way we think about it is there are three kind of categories of like the internal impact, like how this affects us internally, emotionally, or psychologically, okay? One of the ways is we could feel like a fake or a fraud, like we said. Another way it can impact us is we tend to attribute our success to luck or something outside of us versus our own skill set, our own, you know, hard work, our experience, our intelligence. 
And the third way that it impacts us internally is we tend to discount our success. Oh, I'm not as good as everybody thinks I am or whatever it is. And we tend to push compliments aside as part of that. And that's not helpful at all, at all as you can imagine. So I want you all now, please, to write down which one of these applies to you. What's the internal impact for you on or from this imposter syndrome? Do you tend to be more humble than you should be and you don't promote yourself enough in your organization or outside of your organization? Do you tend to be maybe less confident as a result, okay? So write down which of these applies to you and any other internal impact that may be the case for you as well, okay? And then the next thing I want you all to do, please, is write down and consider what, what's your experience? How often do you feel like an imposter? Is it 25% of the time? Is it 50% of the time? 75% of the time? Write down whatever percentage it is that you feel this is the case for you, and it will give you a sense of how critical and important this is to really, you know, take a look at it right away, okay? All right, so write that down. And remember, too, think about, I wanted to give you actually a couple more examples of other times when you uh, may feel like a fraud. I've had clients tell us, you know, when I'm giving a presentation or writing an article or handing in a project, whatever it is, again, think about these different times so we can identify those themes. And by the way, feel free to share those in the chat box right now if you'd like to, because I'd love to get some other examples from people so that we know we're not alone. So here's the deal. Um, you're definitely not alone because whenever we begin to work with a new client through career coaching, nine times out of 10, when we ask them, you know, what is their biggest obstacle to any of their career goals, they tell us that they are their biggest obstacle. They're the ones that, getting in their, that are getting in their own way. Okay, so this is a very common phenomenon like we talked about. Now let's talk about the external results and impact too, okay? So if you take a look at this slide, everybody, these are some of the tangible or external impacts that occur as a result of feeling this sense of having the imposter syndrome or feeling like you're a fraud, okay? And by the way, if you're not sure what impact this is having on you, feel free to ask a coworker or a friend or family member or a former coworker or a mentor or coach, like, how do I come across? How do you see me coming across that could be a result of the imposter syndrome? This is really, really helpful because you can get that objective advice and feedback on when you come across as less confident. Is it in team meetings or is it more one-on-one -on -one in front of a client, okay? Here are some examples on the far right. It could be that you don't apply for a new job if you wanna make a career change, but you're afraid to do it and you feel like, gosh, I'm not qualified for that. You may not apply or may be hesitant to go for that next promotion as a result of this. That is another external impact. You may not submit papers or you may feel uncomfortable or refuse to do presentations or write articles for your industry association or even maybe for your job because you feel less confident about it. Another impact is understating your experience or your skill set, being too humble versus, you know, being confident enough to say, hey, I am good at these things and accepting those compliments too. And in some cases, if you look at the last one here, everyone, in some cases it makes us over-prepare for tasks, which is a really bad thing because then we're wasting time doing things that we don't really need to. It was good enough, you know, if we spent that hour on it versus, the extra two hours that we didn't need to. All of these, everyone, result in higher stress. So another external impact here, and we could make an argument that this is internal as well, of course, is that we are more stressful or more stressed out, I should say. You know, these things make our jobs more stressful and our lives more stressful because we have this internal sense of discomfort and lack of confidence. So the impact on me, and I will share with you all too, and just be honest, is that sometimes I feel like I'm not at my best, like being my best self in my work, um, and just not on my game as a result of the imposter syndrome. Sometimes I avoid work and you know tougher um, tasks for my business as a result of it. And 
instead of taking action about this, um, when I'm not handling things as well as I could, what happens to me is I end up being in like reactive mode. So part of the problem with the imposter syndrome, everyone as well, is that we tend to react to our lives and react to our jobs instead of being proactive and confident and going out there and managing what's going on, okay? These examples on the far right, when I gave a speech on this um, to a women in biology group a couple of years ago, these are some of the examples that the participants gave in terms of the impacts that they had. Um, it made them more nervous um, and less confident about tasks and projects, more so than they needed to be. And we also talked about the negative thinking and that inner impact that we talked about before. So what I want you all to do here is please write down now, what is the biggest negative impact for you from the imposter syndrome? Let's write down two things, okay? And we've got some people that have shared in the chat box, which is fantastic. I'm just gonna read a couple of these. So one person says, I don't verbalize my thoughts or questions in some meetings, or sometimes I don't volunteer for certain projects because I think other people would be more technically qualified. That's definite negative thinking, right? And here's the deal, everybody. If you're not as technically qualified in some areas, then go take a class, beef it up, you know, figure that out. But the rest of it that is just negative thinking, we've got to push it aside, okay? Um, some, another person shared in the chat box, this is great, you know, in order to better manage the imposter syndrome, she says something like, I can do X, Y, Z, even though she's never done it in order to you know think more positively okay but in order to or if, when thinking about you know making a career change this particular person says you know and wanting to do something else though i don't have the qualifications or experience for it and then i get overwhelmed when i have to do those particular projects or tasks so please know everybody like we said we're not alone and you're not alone write down the two biggest negative impacts for you so that you can start to manage them awareness is the first step right Okay, let's take a look at the next slide here and start to talk about the tools to manage this, okay? So first of all, you need to identify when you have the imposter syndrome, when you experience this, how often it is, okay? And then we can start to, to talk about the tools to manage it. And I'm gonna give you some tools just verbally right now, and then we'll go to this next slide and there's some more tools on the next slide as well. So one of the things that we will have our clients do, first of all, is to journal for just one day, have like a little pad of paper in your purse or you know, in your wallet or on your desk, whatever it is, or in your car, and just do a quick journal about the negative thoughts that go on during the course of your day. Write down what your gremlins are, so to speak, those negative inner voices. And notice how much negative stuff, A, you're saying to yourself during the course of the day, and B, how redundant it is over time. So we always like our clients to have, okay, write down what the negative thoughts are so that they can understand, oh my gosh, wow, look at how much time I'm wasting on this negative thinking. And also, look at how often I'm saying the same bad things over and over to myself, and I need to cut, you know, I need to stop doing that. It helps them be more aware of what exactly is going on so that they can then start to manage it, okay? Remind yourself the second thing in terms of journaling too, and this would be you know, a journal entry as well, is identify and manage and talk about or think about what your accomplishments were for that day. So have like an accomplishments document at the end of each day and write down two or three things that you accomplished in that day in order to be more confident about what's going on in any given day at work, okay? A third thing to do is to identify or think about these fears or thoughts that you have that are negative, everyone, as like voices in your head versus the truth, okay? So instead, pull it outside of you. Your goal with this negative thinking is to become their, the observer rather than the victim of it, okay? So the more you can observe and kind of notice, and that's the point of the journaling exercise, right? The more you can observe what goes on in your head, the better able you'll be able to manage it versus being sucked into it and being down by it, okay? And then finally, like we talked about a moment ago, using that daily accomplishments kind of journal that you have at the end of each week, 
put that into like a little brag book for yourself so you can remind yourself on a consistent basis of the things you've accomplished. The other thing as part of that brag book that we have people do, and I'm actually gonna to go to the next slide here and give you an example from a client too, is we have had clients and suggested to them that they keep those emails and those kudos that they get from customers, from teammates, copy and paste them into the same document. Write down when your boss says something good about what you've done in order to combat those negative thoughts, okay? So that can help you enormously as well. You've got to have like this evidence in a way, okay? Um, another person, I wanted just to just share a couple of other things in the chat box here, and then we'll talk about client Beth and some of the things we did with her to improve her confidence. One person is sharing that her external impact is that um, sometimes she may apply or not really apply for jobs that she's not qualified for. Um, it hinders salary increases, another person says, and another person says her lack of confidence makes her mind go blank, and she feels like I have nothing to add any value, so she kind of freezes, okay? So these things, by the way, for you all, um, can help you with the items that you're talking about in the chat box, so that was perfect. Thank you so much for sharing those. So several years ago i was working with a client Beth. she was actually here in atlanta and she worked at a very large corporation here and she was pretty high up she was a director level in their marketing department and as we coached i, I would guess it was probably like the second or third session into our coaching relationship she said you know hallie i have this sense of the imposter syndrome or i always feel like i'm a fraud and i said why and she said because i don't have an undergraduate degree she had never finished college and she felt like because of that, all of her success and being able to move up in her organization was due to, gosh, her bosses liked her and were giving her a break and just being nice to her and kind of felt bad for her or something. And so we started to work on this. And these are some of the tools, if you look on the slide, that we use to help Beth increase her confidence. So one of the things she did was to interview others to feel more confident in her skills and ever uncover those skills that she took for granted. So we had her ask other people, what do you see as my greatest strength? What do you think of when you think of me? What do I do better than most people that you know? And it was so validating for her um, to hear from other people exactly you know, what she was good at. We also, number two here, we had her write down affirmations that she would say to herself in the mirror every day. Yes, it might sound kind of kooky, but I'm telling you all, it works. So she had a post-it with affirmations on her bathroom mirror that she would say to herself on a regular basis about the accomplishments and things you know, that she had achieved that we could definitely say it wasn't because of luck, it was because of skill. The third thing we had Beth do is write down all of her accomplishments since childhood. This is a really great exercise because you look all the way back and when you have this you know, huge long list, it's so much harder to be or to lack confidence. So writing down all of your accomplishments since childhood over time historically like that is incredibly powerful. And two other things we wanna um, recommend to you all, number four and five here, is to take small risks every day. So here's the deal everyone, confidence is a muscle. We all have it. It might just be kind of smushed inside of us because of past experience or this imposter syndrome that has come from wherever place it's come from, okay? and in order to build and maintain our confidence, you have to exercise it, like work it out like a muscle at the gym, okay? You have to take it to the gym. And one of the ways to do that is to take small risks every day. So what are some things, and I encourage you all to actually write this down, take, think about something that you can do to take a small risk every day of the week for the next week, whether it's, for example, I'm gonna raise my hand in the next team meeting and have something to say. I'm gonna ask my boss a question that I've been hesitant to ask and it's completely okay to do so. If you're more introverted, I'm gonna to talk to the cashier at the checkout at the grocery store, you know, whatever it is, think of some way that you can take a small risk because if you do that on a more regular basis and take these small risks every day, you will build your confidence over time and you'll look back and say, oh, okay, I'm fine, I've taken these risks, and as a result, you'll be better able to take larger risks. And the last one here, number five, is 
pay attention to your body language and your body posture. And there's this great TED Talk here, and I encourage you all to take a look at this um, and use this link to go to it, about body position at work and how it impacts how you come across and how confident you feel. When we're working with clients, um, I'll tell them, okay, I want you to get into a body posture or a position that feels more confident for you. And when they do that, whether it's sitting up straighter, whether it's standing up, maybe it's sitting forward, you know, with their arms on the table, whatever it is, when they do that in that moment, they feel more confident. And I haven't done anything. I just told them to get into that position for themselves. I don't have a magic wand. That'd be nice, but I don't. So I want you all to understand, too, that that confidence is inside of you. And sometimes it's about making the choice to tap into it. Part of the way you can do that is pay attention to your posture. Sit up straight. Sit in a confident manner on a regular basis when you're talking with people. And this can help you prevent your mind from going blank. You know, if you have to take a few deep breaths before you go into a meeting to get into a better headspace, that's fine too. So the end of the story with client Beth here, and then we'll go to action steps here on the next slide, is that after we worked with Beth on these confidence issues and she started to, you know, dive into her job search, she got this huge promotion at um, a large organization in Chicago. It was actually at Sears. Um, I can tell you that because the rest is confidential already. Um, and it was such a big promotion, everyone, though. It was, I was just thrilled for her that she moved her whole family to Chicago for that job. And she was so incredibly happy. So I want you to get that this does work. It takes time and effort. It takes taking action on your part. And I want you to start to think about that right now. I want you to start to think about action steps you can take if you need to brainstorm them with others, that's fine. But right now, I'd like you to start to come up with, as best as you can, two action steps that you can take in the next week, because it does work. You can get that next promotion. You can ask for that raise, make that career change. Again, it's not like Pollyanna, wave a magic wand. It takes time and effort, and beefing up and enhancing your skills and experience that you do actually lack, the practical side of it. Okay, but you cannot let these negative inner thoughts hinder you. So go ahead, everyone, and please feel free to, to share in the chat box questions you have, but also your action steps, okay, because we'll move to that in just a minute here. And if any of you all feel like you need additional assistance with any of these steps or anything else through career coaching, we are happy to help you. These are quotes from some of our clients. Our clients have gotten jobs at fantastic places to work. We get emails all the time saying, I'm in my brand new job. I'm so happy and thrilled. Thank you so much for your help. We love doing what we do and we are happy to help you. If you would like more information to set up a consultation with me, the consultation is complimentary. It's totally free. I'm happy to chat with you to let you know more about our services. You can ask any questions that you have and I will tell you what I think we should do as far as next steps, okay? All right, so I want you all to think right now about, okay, what's gonna be different tomorrow as a result of today? And we're going to pause for a moment and go ahead and answer, or I should say I will answer any questions that you have. So go ahead and enter any questions that you have into the chat box, and I'm gonna scroll up here and see if we've got some so far. Okay, so we talked about the wishful thinking, and this is where, um, in terms of, you know, how do we know the difference between wishful thinking? So this is a great question, the difference between wishful thinking and, you know, a negative inner voice. When you're researching, you know, what it takes to get that next promotion, and you've talked to your boss about qualifications, and you've looked at job descriptions to know what you're qualified for and, you know, what those qualifications are, you need to make a list of, okay, here on the left side, these are the practical, realistic things where I do need to go take a class or I do need to, you know, beef up this skill or volunteer on the side to gain this additional experience. So there are the practical considerations like we talked about, but then on the right-hand side, you need to write down all of those negative thoughts and those things that are just holding you back that you're causing on your own, okay? So a great way to do that is just to break those up into two columns like that. So you can start to identify the difference between those two things. Okay. 
Any other questions? What is your best tool or program that I might access to evaluate whether to stay in my administrative position or dive off into self-employment? Self-sabotage and imposter syndrome loom large. Oh, can I understand that? Tell me about it, right? Um, when I started my business 18 years ago, I was totally freaked out and thought I was crazy. Um, so the best tool or program to do this um, would be to um, access and use our Identify Your Ideal Career Workbook. So we have a workbook. It is actually on sale right now, everyone. Um, it is only $20. It's, we have a coupon on our site that's $50 off. We sell it for more than that typically. So I highly recommend you go to our website and go under, um, actually I think it says it on the, the homepage, but if you go under our career store and look at Ideal Career Workbook, okay, identify your ideal career workbook. I'll type that in here. That would be the best thing to do to help you decide which is the best, you know, direction for you to go in, okay? Because it has our career model in there, and that career model tells you the eight things you need to consider in order to know the right career path, okay? And it also has actually extensive tools to help you overcome this imposter syndrome and exercises. Another tool, everyone, is a book called Taming Your Gremlin, and I'll put that in here as well in the chat box. This book is great because it's very, actually, I need to send it to everybody because I kept sending it to somebody else. Hold on, everybody. Um, I'm going to put this in here now. Taming Your Gremlin is fantastic. It's a very short, simple, easy read, um, and it helps you identify and get better at like observing those negative inner voices and managing them versus having them crawling all over you. So those are two really good resources. Thanks for that question. That was perfect. Anyone else? With the person who mentioned their mind goes blank, one of the things you want to do, and then we'll give it one more second here and we'll start to close out for today, but with the person who mentioned their mind goes blank, so if any of you kind of freeze when you're on the spot and you've got this going on, one of the things I would suggest is in advance of the meeting or whatever it is, do some preparation and write down some of your ideas and thoughts um, and questions or comments that you might have so that if your mind does go blank, you can you know, reference your notes, if you will. And the other thing is, if you perform and do all of these other action steps that we just talked about and start to build that confidence muscle more, then you'll have less of that issue. Because listen, I mean, that happens to me too. Sometimes I breathe. Remember that it's okay to say, you know what, I'm not sure what I want to say about that quite yet, or I don't know the answer to that question quite yet. Can I get back to you? So it's okay sometimes too. There might be a reason that you're freezing. It might be something that you're not really ready to dive into and you need to think about it. And us introverts, I'm more introverted, I'm one of them. Sometimes we need to ponder things a little bit more and it's okay to ask for that additional time, okay? All right, it looks like one more question just came through. If any of you would like to take advantage of that um, career consultation or strategy session, feel free to email us. And I am going to address this one. Education is valued more than experience in my field. As a result, I am returning to the classroom part-time this fall to work on the next level degree. Yes, my external influences are actual comments from people, oh my gosh, that I am not qualified because I lack the degree when I actually have more experience. So as much as you possibly can, everyone, if you are getting this message or these messages from other people, ouch, that's tough, I want you to filter that out as much as you can, push it aside. If you can manage and somehow minimize your contact or communication with them, that would be great too. I know we can't always do that, but if you can do that, that would be great. And as much as possible, try to steer the conversation in a different direction. So if you feel like they're going in that direction or they actually are with you, hmm, thanks for sharing that. I think we need to talk about this task for the project, whatever it is. So as much as possible, you know, imagine that you've got like a coat of arms or kind of armor on you to deflect that as much as possible and steer the conversation in a different direction. 
All right, everyone. That's our last question for today. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Look out for the follow-up email with the recording. And if you would like the slides, please, as I said, just send me an email. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks again.